Hello, and welcome to Lecture 5 of the Momentum Unit in Phys 1104. And in this lecture, we're going to meet one of the absolute most important laws in all of physics, the law of conservation of momentum. At the very end of last lecture, we saw that because the carts interact with each other, they cause each other's momentums to change. But on the other hand, because the two-cart system has only weak interactions with the track, the momentum of the total system remains the same through the collision. This is part of an important idea. We can think about the interaction between the carts and realize that that is an interaction between two objects which are both inside the system. So because of that, we call it an internal interaction. On the other hand, if we think instead about the interaction between the carts and the track, that's an interaction which crosses the system boundary. It's between objects that are in our system and an object that is outside the system. And so we call this an external interaction. It's important to notice the difference between what internal and external interactions do to a system. The internal interactions, in our case of two carts, are causing the carts to exchange momentum. They affect each other's momentum, but the total momentum of the system doesn't change. It just gets moved around inside the system. On the other hand, if we think about a system like the book sliding across the floor where there's a strong external interaction, we've already seen that that strong external interaction causes the whole momentum of the system to change. Because internal and external interactions do different things to the system, it's important to distinguish between systems that do and don't have external interactions. So the term we use is an isolated system, when a system has no external interactions. In other words, when it does not interact with the environment. And so, to a reasonable approximation, our carts rolling along the track are a fairly isolated system. So, in an isolated system, no momentum enters or leaves the system. It just gets moved around from one object in the system to the other. But this may remind you of something we saw a couple of lectures ago. It's like our houses full of cats, where we've made sure that the cats can't enter or leave. And so, since momentum is an extensive quantity, that means it's going to follow the same sort of rule as the cats in the house with the fence around it. In other words, that the momentum will only change because of creation or destruction, not because of input or output. Well, that raises the question, which we'll eventually get to, of whether momentum can be created or destroyed. Remember that how we choose our system is a choice. So let's think about that choice for the carts. Remember that the interaction between the carts is the only really strong interaction. So if we choose to put both carts in our system, then the only interaction that really matters is an internal one. And so we have an isolated system. We've already seen that in this case, experimentally, the momentum of the system as a whole remains unchanged. On the other hand, we could talk about a system where we've chosen to just have one cart in our system. Now the interaction between the carts crosses the system boundary. That means it's an external interaction, and we know it's strong, so we can't neglect it. And so this is not an isolated system. So depending on our choice of system, we can make our system be isolated or not. And while for the isolated system of two carts, the momentum stayed the same, you can see that since the total momentum now is just the momentum of one cart, it changes during the collision. Let's check your understanding of the idea of an isolated system. So let's return to this example of a swimming scallop, and as before, I'm defining my system as just the scallop. And I want you to choose which of these answers is the most correct explanation of whether the system is isolated and why. 